Okay, so now we're on um, question part D for question number five. <clears throat> five part D of June 2016, GCE um, paper, S1. Now, here we've got a question about normal distribution. So, Shyam decides to model the weights of babies born at the hospital by the random variable W, where W is such that it's normally distributed with a mean of 3.43 and a standard deviation of 0 0.65. That's what this means. Okay, the weights are such that they are normally distributed and the first number shows is the mean and the second number shows is this, the variation. Okay, so 0 0.65 is the standard deviation, 0 0.65 is the variation. Now, we've got to find the probability that the weight is less than 3. W is less than 3 means the weight of the baby is less than 3 kilograms. Okay, so we're going to use the model that we have for normal distribution. Normal distribution has a particular um, set model which is defined by this table over here. Okay, this is the table that's given to you in your formula book booklet. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to use this normal distribution curve uh, one I prepared, prepared earlier okay I'll do another one as well underneath it okay now what I know is the mean is 3.43 that's the mean value okay that's what's right in the middle here normal distribution we want to find the probability that the weight is less than 3 so I'm going to take um, a weight here, less than 3. So it's, of course it's going to be less than the mean. Over here somewhere. Okay, so that's 3. We want to find the probability that the weight is less than 3. Now the, the area under this cu curve tells us a probability. The total area is one unit. Okay, that's in the standardized one. But let's just deal with this first. So we want to find this we want to find what proportion this area is of the whole thing. Now, here we've got the actual um, data that we, we're dealing with, and this is going to be representing what is on this table. This table is such that the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. Okay, this, this is the data for, for that particular um, scenario. Okay, so these are, the, these are the values of Z, which are the values for example, under this table, for example, if that, that value here is, say, um, 0 0.5 here, then this represents the, the area to the left of that particular point. That's the area there, okay? The total area is 1, all right? So, where were we? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to you can think of it as standardized. Okay. There's three. The standard deviation here is the, the mean is zero. The standard deviation is one. And we want to standardize this value. So I'm going to call this value Z here. Now we know that Z is equal to the value you have, which is three. So the Z is equal to, you can say, X minus mu. Mu means the mean over the standard deviation, which is sigma. Okay, mu is the mean. So it's going to be 3 minus the mean, which is 3.43, over the standard deviation, which is 0 0.65. This will tell me how, did, how many standard deviations it's going to be, in this case, below the mean. So 3 minus 3.43. You've got to be very careful here with your calculator. A lot of people, they make this, this, this mistake here. You've got to put either a fraction so you do 3 minus 3.43 divided by 0 0.65. You don't divide by the standard deviation, by the variation, you divide by the standard deviation. So it's not 0 0.65 squared. Now, when you find this calculation, many people, they put 3 minus 3.43 divided by 0 0.65 without the fraction bar. In that case, it will do the division before the subtraction. Here, the subtraction must be done before the division. So be careful about that. Okay, either use a bracket for 3 minus 3.43 or use this fraction bar. Okay, so that gives you, as a decimal, minus 0 0.6615. So minus 0 0.6615.
Okay, so that's the z value. So we want to find the probability that w is less than 3, which is equal to the probability, if we can think about z, this is minus 0 0.6615. Okay, that z is less than negative 0 0.6615. Okay, so that's what we've got to find. Now, let's go to our table. What will we notice? We want the value of z, which is negative 0 0.66. Okay, so two, de two decimal places. What we notice here is there's no negative z values. The z values are all positive. So basically, the z values start from 0 going that way. We want something over here. Okay, so what we've got to do is the following. We're going to think about it a bit, all right? We don't have the values of z. Oops, I'm taking away more than I want to take away. Okay, we don't have the z values that we we want we we need in the table. Okay, so we've got to think about what to do. Okay, we want something in this position here. We want something in this position over here. Okay, now. This table only tells us z values which are more than here. But what we know that this is actually symmetrical. This is a symmetrical, it's called a bell curve, okay, of normal distribution. So the value of z here and the value of z here, they'll be the same magnitude but opposite signs. So this is a negative value, this is a positive value. And the area that I need, which is the area here, will be the same as the area over there. Okay, those two areas are the same. So if I can find this area here using this value of z, okay, now the table only tells us what's to the left, what's to the left of the z value. So if I use a z value which is a positive of what I found there, okay, I will get the area on this side all the way back to zero. All this area. So the area I want is going to be, because the whole area is one, is one minus that area. Okay? So let's just go back here. What we can say is we need to find this area over here. We can't find that area from the table. However, what we can do is we can find the area in this section over here. Okay. I can find the area all the way back from here. I can find the area from here backwards. Well, that's not the area we need, but what we need is 1 minus the area. That will give us the area that we need. This is, this is the required area that we need. Okay? So let's go to... We know, basically, that this value of... This value of Z here is 0 0.6615. Okay? Because it's symmetrical. Okay, and I know that the probability that I need, the probability that I need here, is equal to 1 minus the probability that Z is less than 0 0.6615. Okay, which is 1 minus, so we go to our table and we look for 0 0.6615. 0 0.6615, the closest we see here is is 0 0.7454. Let me just copy and take it along. Okay, that's what we need. Take it back to our page. Okay, so that's what we need here. Just move it out of the way slightly and make it smaller. Okay, so what we need is the probability that Z is less than 0 0.6615 is going to be 0 0.7454. So you've got 1 minus 0 0.7454, which gives us our value. Take our calculator, and you do um, 1 minus 0 0.7454, and there we have it. That's the answer, 0 0.2546. So 0 0.2546, and here we have our answer for this part of the question.
Okay, so now with part E, it says, with references to your answers to B, C, part 1 and D, comment on Shyam's decision. Now, her decision was to to consider or to assume that it's normally distributed, that the weights of the babies are normally distributed. Okay, so if we look at B and C, part 1, we can see that um, Q2 is kind of close to the mean weight. So you could say that, you know, maybe it's justified. Therefore, you know, could be justified. Could be justified. That, that's from looking at from the angle. Okay. Um, then, if you look at, for example, the probability that the weight is less than 3, 0 0.2546, that's what the normal distribution tells us. So, the normal distribution... distribution tells us that the probability that the weight is less than 3 is equal to 0 0.2546 okay the the actual date the actual data the actual data the probability that w is less than 3 is equal to well if you look at this um You've got nine babies whose weight is three or, or is less than three. Okay, so you've got eight plus one, that's nine, right? Out of 50 altogether. So nine out of 50 is multiplied by two. It's going to be 0 0.18. Which is, is it close? It's not really that close. It's kind of close. Okay, so mm, you could see that you know, it's it's the data doesn't look so normally distributed because you've got this uneven side here, but it's not too far away. So just to you have to you know basically justify your decision. So from from the angle of the median and the um, mean, okay, they're very close together. So you could say from that it's kind of justified, okay. But from the actual data, the probability of the weights being less than three. It's you know not so um, strong there. Okay, so you could say maybe the probability that the weight is less than three. Okay, from the um, normal distribution is um, not too close. To the probability of the weight being less than three from the actual data, okay, so you can say maybe her decision isn't you know, justified. Although you can say this is arguable. I would say that. Sorry, my hand is going to put here. Although, okay, it is arguable. So it's not such a, um, you know, you can't, Give a strong argument either either way. Okay, it's not too far. It's not too close. So it could be justified. It might not be. But basically, you have to just give some reasons um, from this data. So you compare the mean and the median. Okay, you can see they're quite close. So from that angle, when the mean and median are almost the same, that's when you can say that some things. Uh, you know, there's not much skew in the data. You could say. So it's it's uh, a normally distributed. Okay, but you can see that the probability of the weight being less than three um, from the normal distribution and from the actual data, it's kind of close, but not that close. So, you know, you can argue both ways here. All right, so that's something that you could mention for part E. And now part F, a newborn baby weighing 3.43 kilograms is born at the hospital without carrying out any further calculations, state giving a reason what effect the addition of this newborn baby to the sample would have on your estimate of the mean and the standard deviation. 
Okay, so remember the mean is equal to 3.43 kilograms. That We were told that in the beginning, right? So without carrying out any further calculations, all right, so if the mean is 3.43, okay, and you add another baby, the same mean, okay, so you're adding 3.43, you're dividing by 1, so it's not going to change, it's going to be no change in the mean. Okay, because it's, it's the same value as the mean, so it won't change the mean at all. Now, with the standard deviation, okay, the standard deviation tells you how far something, is, how far the data is from the mean. So you're going to add a new, um, you know, you're going to basically add zero to the numerator. Okay, the basic standard deviation is the average distance of how the average distance of something from the mean. So what you're what you're effectively doing is you're adding zero to the numerator because there's no difference between the mean and this particular value, but you're adding one more item to the denominator. So you're, you've got the same numerator, but you've got the, the denom so you've got the same uh, numerator, all right, but the denominator is now one more than it was before. Okay, so if you haven't changed the numerator, but you've changed the denominator, you've increased the denominator, the standard deviation is going to go down. Okay, so no, no change. And you can give a reason for this, because, this is for the mean, because, um, you know, it's the same as the mean. It's equal to the mean. All right? But standard deviation is going gonna, is gonna to reduce. It's going to get low, lower. Why? You can say because... Um, One more item added with no change in numerator. You can say something like that. Added to denominator with no change in the numerator. Okay, because the standard deviation is a measure of the distance of every item from the mean value divided by, okay, um, you know, the number of entries. So one more entry has been added, so the denominator increased by one, but the numerator stayed the same. So of course it's going to get smaller. Okay, so that's how you can deal with part F there in this question. And there we have finally finished this long question number five. Thank you for watching.